Welcome to the Georgia Square Mall. Take a good long hard look at it, because most of this mall will cease to exist very soon, if it hasn't already. Redevelopment was declared that three quarters of the mall will come down for a walkable outdoor center. Implying malls themselves aren't walkable, but I digress. Let's take a look at what once was. Georgia Square Mall got its start around February 1981, being built up as a two-floor regional mall for the small city of Athens. As developed by CBLN Associates, the mall was touted to be aesthetically pleasing to prospective shoppers, featuring extensive landscaping outside, as well as a number of interior features inside reminiscent of the disco era. The original anchors would also include J.C. Penney, Sears, Davison's, based out of Atlanta, and Belk. We may laugh at the mall now, but back then, Georgia Square Mall was a big deal, and it was the largest rural class mall of its kind at the time. It also featured a unique layout, with only 80% or so of the mall being two floors. The wing leading towards Sears turns into a single floor corridor portion, as the food court is also a single floor portion. Popularity kind of exploded with the Georgia Square Mall, with Sky City reporting on tons of retail flocking for the mall shortly after it opened. The historic aerial imagery that I could find for the area does reflect this. Even with the mall full, the mall itself served as an anchor for other retail shopping centers at the time, establishing a full-on retail corridor for Athens, and it remains as a major retail corridor for the area today, even as the mall flounders. Georgia Square Mall's anchor lineup was actually pretty strong, and the only change came in the form of Davison's, whom was acquired by Macy's in 1986. Man, Macy's was already getting an early start as a predator, wasn't it? It gets weird though, as in 1998, the store would be rebranded again into Riches, before being turned into Riches Macy's in 2003. And then, Back to Macy's in 2005. I guess Macy's had some indigestion with that merger. Okay, jokes aside, there was a lot of nuance and business politics that happened with the companies that own Macy's, Riches, and Davison's, among other nameplates. It's a lengthy story that deserves a separate video if retail history and business politics interests you. The Georgia Square Mall only saw one renovation in its lifespan, as far as I could tell, and that would come rather late in 2007 as a cosmetic overhaul to the exterior entrances and the interior corridors. Although I would prefer to see the old world as pictured in some of the old newspaper archives. This was at least a tasteful renovation that doesn't leave me hating life the same way Hall Property Group or Simon renovations do. However, the general consensus is that it was too little too late as perceptions about the mall were changing for the worse and the anchors were beginning to suffer. Out of all the anchors, only Belk remains, not only as still open, but as part of the coming redevelopment plan. More on that later. Macy's would be the first anchor to go, closing in February 2017, and this is about as surprising as when Sears announces closure. Speaking of Sears, Sears would get seared in October 2019, with liquidation sales beginning in August 2019. 
JCPenney, meanwhile, would cling to life all the way into the beginning of the terrible 20s, closing its doors in October 2020. This just left a vintage Belk store as the mall's only anchor. By now, CBL and Associates was long out of the picture of Georgia Square Mall as they sold the mall back in September 2013 for the low, low price of $176 million. Hendon Properties would take the helm by that time, and in 2022, it would be announced that the mall would undergo extensive redevelopment, with most of the mall being demolished, save for a small portion around Belk, as well as the Belk itself. I guess a tiny sliver of mall is better than nothing. Meanwhile, the rest of the mall would be replaced by a mixed-use development with a primary focus on residential space. I suppose it's better than the typical lifestyle center trend, and we still get a little bit of mall on the draft. I could see the interior corridors being used for events or specialty shops, but we'll see what comes of that when it happens. To our right was the former Macy's. You can see traces of its appearance despite the wall, and the brickwork is nice, if a bit too white for my picky architectural tastes. Those guys you saw earlier. I was wondering if they were calling me out for this video, but no. They were telling me to go to the kiosk up ahead and get myself a chain. Now, I am not much for jewelry or bling or whatever the Zoomers call it today. What do they call it? Drip? I don't know. I don't speak Zoomer. I did have another encounter with someone out front. Well, back in this case. Someone was on the phone talking about filming and I thought they were calling me out when I overheard it. But I assume I misinterpreted that, and I at least avoided trying to make a scene. And I got through it in the end. After all, there are malls to see. Georgia Square Mall is said to have a strong 70s modern design. And despite the major renovations, some say you can still see the 70s bleed through today. Personally, I do like what I see with this mall, even if others take issue with how dated it may be. However, what's important to know is that this mall's story is coming to a close. The redevelopment plan has not gone through yet as of the making of this video, but so far I haven't seen any opposition against it or any sign that it's going to be cancelled. I guess we'll have to wait and see if I turn out to be wrong on this one. Some say I am wrong about a lot of things, yet those same people refuse to help me in research when I ask. Thanks for having me, Athens, Georgia, and if you have any memories about the Georgia Square Mall, do share in the comments below. Until next time, this is Doomy Grunt wishing you and the Georgia Square Mall. Farewell.